So nice to finally meet you, Davina, because I haven't met you yet in person, so at least we can meet on Zoom. So yeah, it's very good to meet you. Hopefully I can meet you soon in person as well. And welcome to you on our podcast. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so welcome. Much. Um, so we're moving into an episode. We've invited yoga teacher, my friend Darvina Plant, on to talk to us about why she started yoga, what kept her going through the practice, and why she became a teacher. And we'll get into that um, in a moment. But thank you so much, for Darvina, for joining us on our podcast. You're our first guest. And really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this with us. Um, welcome. Did you want to introduce yourself? Oh, gosh. Hi. Well, thank you for having me. My name is Darvina, Darvina Plant. It's my full name. Um, and actually, let's just clear this up. I didn't make it up. I didn't make like a yoga name because I guess that's the thing. And like people have gone, oh, is that re your real name? And I'm like, yeah, it's my real name. So it's my real name. <laughs> Um, and I am a full-time yoga teacher in London. I host retreats. I also run trainings and host trainings for different teachers. And um, I'm just really kind of passionate about community and um, yoga being available to anybody that that wants to practice it really um, and just trying to facilitate that in London. <laughs> nice. Um, that's awesome. I didn't realize people asked you about your name being real or not but you're they right do. like some people have like a stage name. Yeah they do yeah. especially people from um, Eastern Europe because we we have complicated names uh so we we get like a uh, easier name like our i think our chef kat polsky i mean her name is not polsky but we call her kat polsky because she's like this is easier so fair enough so yeah yeah i love it <laughs> yeah. um so we'll, we'll get right into it um we would like to know what brought you to practice yoga in the first place and what was your first experience of going into a yoga studio or a class like for you? That's an interesting question. So I started practicing yoga, kind of getting yoga curious, shall we call it? Um, probably when I was about 18. So coming up to maybe like 20 years now. Um, wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah, that was the, my first introduction to the practice. And I remember it was it was like almost a Bikram style practice back then, which was really popular, especially in London. And there was hardly any yoga studios around. It wasn't like it is now. It was like, you had to kind of plan it and seek it out. And it was a whole thing. And I remember one of my friends actually, who I was in a, a show with, I was in a show in the West End at the time. And she had said, we should go to this class together. So she had kind of like, I tagged along with her and another friend. And I remember this first class was insane. It was like, everyone was in basically bikinis or like the men were in like tight, like teeny weeny bikini shorts. And everyone was like so close to each other. I was like, what is going on? Um, and I distinctly remember the teacher saying, you're not allowed to leave. Like I remember them saying that and this long ago that they said you know you're not allowed to leave even if it gets too hot in the room yada 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 um, and I was like oh my god what have I signed myself up for so that was my first experience of yoga which was um, I would say very different to the type of yoga I practice now yeah. um, but nonetheless my first introduction to the to the practice in in some way um I didn't really get hooked you know as I did when I I would say really found the practice which was I think more 2015 when I really kind of found the practice more seriously as a spiritual practice as a healing mm -hmm. practice um when I was actually going through just some personal stuff in my life some big transitions and um and I guess I just wanted I was looking for something, yeah, you know, 
Um, I was looking for something to support me in my life, something to support me being the person I wanted to be that I didn't feel like I was always being. Um, so yeah, I think then I found the practice more as, as a, as a support to my life and a spiritual practice. And, and then I kind of dived into it and immersed myself into it in that second meeting, which was more 2015. So I was in my 20s at that point. Um, yeah, and I started uh, working, well, not working, but just, what is it? You're, you're a karma yogi. I was a karma yeah. yogi um, at Hot Yoga 8 in LA. <laughs> LA. Yeah, because I lived in LA back then. Um, so I just literally found the closest yoga studio to my apartment, which was Hot Yoga 8 in Beverly Hills. And I just started karma yogiing there so that I could get free classes because I was just wanting to practice every day, every day yeah. at that point, just like needed the practice every day, was learning so much, was getting so much. Um, so yeah, that was kind of how it all began back then. Oh, that's that's awesome. I didn't actually know that you lived in LA because you're from London originally, right? Yeah, I'm from and London. And then you moved to LA. Okay. So basically, um, before I kind of entered into to yoga, I worked in entertainment. I was a dancer initially and a singer and performer and then went into working on the business side. So did more like entertainment, like become more of an agent and stuff like that while I was in LA. And then came back to London and decided to really immerse myself and do a teacher training. Oh, no uh, way. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that shit. part about you and I've known you for over a year now. I know because it's, it's always cool. like another life, you know, yeah. I feel like I've got about seven lives that I've lived already in this life, which I'm really grateful for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I can relate to like, um, I, I was a very different person back before I started yoga and I also went to a Bikram class a few times when I was trying to figure out what all this yoga stuff was about. But they say that because they have a script that they have to follow. And I remember they would always say, like, fold yourself like a Japanese ham sandwich. <laughs> and like, that's burned in my memory from Bikram forever now. And I'm like, oh, why did I say this every time? It's so weird. That is so <laughs> weird. <laughs> What a weird thing to have on a script. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. But also we know, I think, we know the story of Bikram now, but yeah, go ahead, Melinda. Sorry. Well, I think we all started with Bikram. That's the interesting that uh we like we all went to Bikram classes at one point in our past. It's quite interesting that it draws lots of people in. So in a way, I was like thankful for Bikram yoga because it got me to yoga or try yoga for the first time. So it's interesting though. Definitely. I do think in a way it is quite an accessible physical practice you know it from what I remember it's a limited amount of postures so it's not it's not creative it's not really a teacher kind of giving their own flow you know what you're getting a lot of people like that when they're newer to something that that there's it's quite daunting to walk into a room and think oh gosh I don't know what I'm gonna get um if if you're not used to it that can be quite a lot so I think there is something about the familiarity of something like Bikram that does appeal to a lot of people for yeah. sure I agree and and I also people feel like oh I'm a bit more flexible because it's so hot I feel like I can do all these amazing things so it's empowering so it makes you feel good about yourself and so yeah. I think it finds it way nice. yeah and you can get you can get like little uh, personal measures of your progress when you're repeating a sequence like same with ashtanga and some other types of yoga I've tried um, sattva yoga we repeated and I you're exactly spot on what you just said like the repetition makes it less foreign more familiar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and we wanted to know so you kind of already touched on you took a teacher training but what how long you'd been practicing and what prompted your decision to sign up for your first 200 hours and potentially become a yoga teacher from there yeah so that was 
the, the seed had definitely been planted from when I was in LA and I was working at doing the karma yogi thing and practicing. But I would say I hadn't really found the style that really spoke to me yet. I was kind of, I was like a bit of a, a yoga flit around, you know, I wasn't quite sure what style I fitted with. So I was just kind of going around and checking things out. And then I came back to London and went to a yoga studio in South London in Peckham and actually for the first time saw a teacher that was black teaching me um, which was a revelation I'd never seen that before I'd never experienced that before so that was something really new to me and I didn't realize how much it mattered until I experienced it um, so I think that was a big part of it, seeing someone that looked like me, teaching me, making me think that I could potentially do this. Because I guess if you don't see someone that looks like you doing something, you don't think it's possible, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that actually now thinking about it, when you asked me this question, it was definitely seeing that teacher there teaching me that made me think, oh, maybe I can do this. Um, so that experience and then finding teachers that I really felt I connected with um, and I think there's a saying when the student's ready the teacher will appear and I remember I was in a yoga class and I was practicing next to my teacher who I didn't know at the time was going to be my teacher and it was Erin Pritchard and we were practicing next to each other and I just kind of like was talking to her about something and about how I wanted to do a teacher training and she was like well I'm running one you know you should join da, 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 da. and um, I then obviously went through the process applied decided to go for it um, and it just felt like everything kind everything kind of came at the right time if that makes sense like the teacher <laughs> appeared it was literally like five minutes away from my house the walk to the studio it was just perfect um and it was just at a time where I needed something different I needed something different um so I was offered another way and an opportunity to learn and and I took it with both hands and I didn't think I realized how incredible um the teacher training was going to be in terms of just the transformation and just the kind of acknowledgement and awakening of, of learning about all of these different concepts um and just feeling like oh finally there's something that I resonate with I think because I'd been like you know I was raised a Catholic my mum's Irish my dad's West Indian so they're very much into their religion um but even though, of course, you know, I followed suit because that's what my family did. It doesn't necessarily resonate with me. Um, I need something more physical. Um, I, you know, sitting in a church pew doesn't really do it for me. So um, once I started to find a yoga asana practice along with the practice and the philosophy and everything that comes with it, it, um, it was really life changing. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. When did you do your teacher training? Pardon? When did you do your teacher training? I think it was 2017. Mm, a while ago, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was, um, it was when teacher trainings weren't every five minutes and like <laughs> once a year, <laughs> you know, like a studio would run a training once a year and that was it kind of thing. Um, and, and that was it. It was a really immersive experience. It was done. We did like an immersive three weeks and then we did the rest of it over. I think it was a course of a year. So it felt like we really had time to process the information to actually start to embody it, to start to take on these practices and these these ways of life. And um, yeah, it, it felt like a really it felt like a good training. I was really glad with my training because I've heard about a lot of a lot of experiences that were not like mine so I'm really really grateful um to my teacher Erin Pritchard for um such a valuable introduction to yoga because it is important you know yeah it is really important um 
there um you're right there's so many teacher trainings out there right now and the experiences can be like life-changing and profound totally dependent on who you're training with and like how how deep they take you mm. in the spiritual practices and actually doing the practice uh what was really important for me was doing meditation and breathing and having to sit there and do that with the group because I was really resistant to it at the beginning and and that was like the the magic of it um for me it's and that's the thing it's important because sometimes the things that are the most transformational for us are the things that we are most resistant to so it is important that we are exposed to all of it for us to then make a decision um you know Mm -hmm. on what works best for us um, so I, uh, I do think, especially in a teacher training setting, it is really important to, um, to, to go to deep dive with the students and to, and to support them. Uh, and, and that sometimes is challenging when you have like massive groups of people and stuff like that, you know, um, it can, it can be hard. Um, so yeah, I guess I would hope that people that do really consider that journey and who they're doing it with because it does have an impact yeah yeah um melinda do you want to yeah yeah ask the next uh, question yeah then no that's um because we were just talking about with actually that uh, there's so many teacher trainings out there and which is good because you know it makes it more available for people to be like oh i want to learn more about it but I guess not everyone wants to be the teach, uh, teacher after they just want to deepen their practice. So there's many different kind of teacher trainings, but you do some some as well yourself, um, Davina. You do it with the David Kyle. Yeah. So we just actually, re- I think it was two weeks ago, finished a um, a 50 hour level run rocket immersion here in London, which was really nice um, to have David come to London as he's been he was here last year but um only just to host some workshops not to lead a training um and also it was really nice for me to have my teacher here so my students could get an opportunity to practice with him as he's for me as close as to the source as you can get um he is one of larry's students and um he has been a really good support and mentor to me on my journey and my past since I found the rocket practice. So it was, uh, it felt like a natural progression, honestly, um, that we would kind of come together and, and offer this training to my community here in London. Um, and it was wonderful. It was so great. We had a really cool crew of students, a really diverse bunch of people doing really wonderful things with the practice. And ultimately, that's what my kind of goal was for the training was to be able to offer the rocket to people that want to take it wherever they want to take it and and give it to people that need the practice. Um, so that it is, doesn't have to be in a yoga studio where you can access the practice. You can find it in a community center. You can find it in a prison. You can find it in a church hall. You can find it in a dance hall. You, you know, you can find it anywhere. And I think that's the beauty of it. So that's really what I was trying to do. Um, and David was trying to do with uh, the training. And I think we succeeded in, in that, um, which is, is really empowering and encouraging when sometimes I know my I can only speak for myself but sometimes I do get a little bit discouraged um in in this yoga bubble that that we we live in in terms of what what people are attracted to and um and you know what they find valuable um so it was it was just really great to to have a really great crew of responsive yogis that are doing great stuff and be able to kind of fill their cup and put them with other amazing yogis and other people it's just like magnets you know you just come together and and good stuff happens um so for me it was just beautiful to see to see that kind of magic happen in front of my own eyes. Yeah. 
all the space for them as well. I guess it's so nice, I guess, to see them evolve and change. Because I do think Rocket is a very good practice. Many people are afraid of Rocket because it sounds a bit like, oh, it sounds aggressive or sounds like it's going to be very hard. But I think Rocket is very inclusive practice. You don't have to do your handstands. I mean, there's lots of handstands and crazy things that they, people do in it. But I think you can just do your own practice, leave your ego at the door and just do your practice, get on your mat, sweat and breathe. And I think the community really shares that experience and feeling when you are in it. So if you can create that in the teacher training, I think it's just the best. Rocket, Rocket is a good practice. I agree. Yeah. I mean, that's why I love Rocket because you can modify it. Like for me, I love Ashtanga, but let's be real. Ashtanga isn't as accessible for a lot of people. You know, Lotus eliminates a lot of people right off the bat. So for me, what I think is that Rocket is more of a daily practice for me. Like, I'd love to say I'm an Ashtangi. I mean, my heart wants to be one. <laughs> but like, my body is like, mate, you're going to mash yourself up. So that's why I'm a Rocket Yogi, you know, like it's it's still the dedication to the practice there's still that you know I'm getting on my mat my, there's a minimum daily requirement I'm getting on my mat I'll do my five A's and my five B's if I'm not going to do my practice and you know I will play with whether it's a rocket one or rocket two or whatever I have time to fit into my day but I think ultimately um why I love the practice is it is a little bit more accessible for a lot more people in my opinion um, and we can talk about that because I believe I've got two Ashtangis on the in the room. So, <laughs> well, yeah. See, I'm like the I'm like opposite of what you what you just said, which is like a good highlight that everybody's different needs to find their own practice. I practice my Ashtanga uh, like four times a week or so because it suits my body. But then I love my rocket to be a bit more playful, and it helps me to develop a bit more strength in the practice and plus get to practice more inversion so that's my that's my mm -hmm. play time but um like I teach Ashtanga I teach rocket and what I love about the rocket exactly what you said is that it's very inclusive it has Ashtanga vibes to it um and literally almost everyone can do it who who's able-bodied and and wants to move and work at that pace yeah um yeah. Yeah, could you could you tell us uh, for the people who are maybe listening who don't know exactly what rocket yoga is? Um, could you give us a little mo moment in history and like what rocket one and rocket two sequences are? Sure. So rocket has a heavy through line of the Ashtanga practice. You know, it's it's its heritage, it's its backbone. And um, mm -hmm. so that's really important to acknowledge. Um, however, we do omit a lot of the more complicated asanas that we were just talking about. So like a lot of more lotus stuff, you know, Gada Pindasana, all of that kind of turtle stuff that we do, you know, all that stuff goes, we take it out, unless you have like an Ashtangi rocket teacher, then maybe they'll put it in just for a bit of play. But those things are omitted um, so that it does become a little bit softer in, in that way, although it is still a very uh, dynamic practice. Um, what you will find if you take a rocket class it will start with your sun salutation so you'll start with the warm-up with your Surya Namaskara A and your Surya Namaskara Bs depending on how long your teacher has will obviously depend on how long and how many of those they do but you'll get warm and then you'll do a standing sequence and then from that standing sequence you'll come down to seated and depending which rocket you're in whether it's rocket one or rocket rocket two you will either come into more forward folding with your rocket one so you'll come into like your paschimottanasanas and then work into the hips your janu shushasanas your seated trees and then your binds 
and working into the hips. And if you're working into a rocket two, when you come into seated, you're going to twists and quite, quite an intensive like three sets of inversions at the top of seated in rocket two. And then you'll move into more back bending. Um, so I would say the rocket one is more of an accessible entry level practice. And I would say that the rocket two is a more advanced practice, but of course it just depends on how the teacher presents the practice. Yeah. Um, really that's, that's how it can differ. Um, rocket three is a combination of one and two. It's, it's not a new thing that's different <laughs> to one and two. It's a combination of them. And that tends to be done in a more, at least 90 minutes more, workshop style setting okay it's not really possible in like an hour class no yeah there's too many postures to do <laughs> 90 poses Thank in you. 90 minutes larry would say oh okay that's a challenge <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i know right so i always like put my timer on and i'm like okay let's go <laughs> yeah yeah, the one rocket one's based off of Shenga primary and the two is mm -hmm. more second series. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. um, we were wondering also, um, so you work full time as a yoga teacher in London, right? I do, yes. Yeah. What what is that like? I think you have to be creative as a yoga teacher in London. If you're thinking that you're gonna teach just studio classes as a full-time yoga teacher, good luck. <laughs> Cause that's gonna be exhausting. So I think for me, I guess what has given me the longevity to be doing this still and as a full-time teacher, um, you know, this is my main source of income would be that I do have different things that I do so obviously you know the trainings and then retreats um corporate clients private clients um so I think it's the variety variety is the spice of life um not getting too focused on just studio classes which I think is quite easy to do and a lot of teachers kind of get trapped in that space um, and I would just love to say right now, don't get trapped in that because there's no value in it. I know that studios will make you believe that, um, you know, working at a studio is really the be all and end all. But I don't believe there's many people that work as a full time yoga teacher that could say that they pay their rent just from teaching studio classes. No. Yeah. We talked about this in one of our previous episodes about um, going through burnout from teaching so much and just like how demanding it is on your physical body. And then we touched on like teacher pay and how it's not actually realistic to be paying your bills and teaching like 25 classes a week. Mm. And um, another topic that comes into that and people are like, oh, I'm just grateful to teach yoga. Like I don't need more money. But a really important topic that comes into teacher pay is like, well, we need to be supporting the teachers because if you don't really need the money then it's keeping one type of teacher in teaching and those are people who don't need money well then it's not yeah then it's not your full-time gig it's basically your hobby um yeah. and that's cool if you don't want to get paid for your hobby but the issue is is then that's filtering into the whole industry where studios believe it's acceptable to pay like ridiculously low amounts to really experience knowledgeable teachers because they're making it out the things like exposure get thrown into the mix and you know this will be great for your exposure and you'll you'll get another hundred people on your mailing list that's not going to pay my rent I'm not going to go to my building and say hey here look at my exposure that's not gonna pay my bills. So no, I'm not okay with that. Like just because I'm a yogi doesn't mean that it that doesn't need to be an energetic and financial exchange that is fair. 
Yeah. And I think sometimes there comes this whole thing when you start to speak up with studios, I've found, where it's almost like you're not supposed to. Like they, they're a bit disappointed that you're bringing this to them. Like you should just be happy that you're teaching classes. And, you know, especially when you're at the more popular studios, it's almost like you should just be quiet and be grateful. And, and for me, that's why I don't really teach in those spaces anymore because they ask for so much and they give you so little, so yeah. little. And quite honestly, a lot of stress <laughs> and anxiety because when you need to cover your classes, it's usually quite challenging um you know um and those things have to come into account you have to think about the amount of admin you end up having to do to cover your classes think about the amount of time and energy you're spending for say 30 pounds mm. yeah yeah so. it's, it's definitely not one hour is it no especially when you have to also take like no sick pay or you also like you uh, go on ho- you want to go on holiday you want to have some time off because obviously we need to recharge as well and recharge our batteries or feel a bit better and then we're gonna have to go on holiday and um we're not gonna get paid and also missing out on classes and also we still have to find those covers and work the admin and just check if they are doing the classes so just quite stressful and they don't really realize how much work it is for us and also Absolutely. being able to afford like further trainings to develop as a teacher and, you know, have some type of career uh, longevity. So you're supported in your continued learning because this is a really lived and experiential practice and you can't just do a teacher training and be like, okay, I get it. I'm a yoga teacher I'm now. Done it's now. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's no, it's it. Like over. A lifetime of work. <laughs> like I'm still figuring loads out. Do you know what I mean? Like it's more, in- it's more intense than, my uh, degree that I did at university mm. in many ways, because like I am still working on it every week, every day, putting these things into practice that I've learned and, and upping my knowledge. Exactly. And that those things do need to be taken into account um, when, when studios or, or, or when you are as a yoga teacher going out there and deciding where you want to be how you want to be doing things and I think it's just important to remember that you do have the power you can decide where you go what you do and how you do it Um, and sometimes you just need to remind yourself of that and be like okay I actually do control this ship nobody else does and even though sometimes you might not feel that way you do so what do I want I say how do I get it um you know and and it is it is possible to create the community that that you would like to to be in yeah that's one of the things I admire about you most is that like you you're not afraid to um speak up for yourself I love that about you. Thank and you, you like just, you know, you put so much work into building your community and dedicating yourself to to that. You know, I would say that I wasn't always like this. I wasn't always able to to speak openly and honestly and 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 be strong about what I wanted. Um, and I honestly believe it was the yoga practice that has helped me to really be able to tap into that. And to understand that and to to be in integrity um, and to lead with that and everything else will follow. Um, Like popularity is is not, I'm not interested in it. I'm not interested in Instagram followers. I'm interested in genuinely actually having connections with my students and supporting them through their lives because ultimately I know how amazing this practice has been for me. It supported me through so many difficult challenges in my life and amazing things as well, like positive things. So um, any way I can share that with my community is that's the yoga. Yeah. Yeah. And do you do you uh, organize something in the future, like near future, like any retreats or teacher, teacher trainings coming up? 
Yeah, so I've got two retreats coming up uh, in the next couple of months, one at the end of this month in the UK in the Quaves, the Quaves camping section, which is really cool. I went there last weekend to check it out and it was so nice, wild swimming and nice hikes and tennis courts and just lots of nature and outdoorsy stuff, which I'm all about. Um, so I've got one of those at the end of June and then one in August. Um, so June 30th till the 2nd of July and August 4th till the 6th. So they're weekends. And then um, just working on finalizing the dates for the next 50 hour training in London, which will be at the end of this year, which I will be the lead teacher on, but I'll also have some wonderful yogis in there with me, supporting me as teachers, bringing their amazing gifts to the table. So I'm excited to share that soon. So do um, keep an eye out for that one. I'm excited. Is it a rocket wanna... one? Yeah, it'll be a rocket. Do you want to share your website and your Instagram so people can look you out? Yeah, so my website is darvinaplant.com, nice and simple, um, first name, last name, and my Instagram, Instagram even is darvinaplantyoga. We will definitely put it in the show notes as well to be, so they can click on it so it's easier access as well. But yes, yeah, thank you very much. And well, I wanted to ask one more question. It's like um, with the teacher trainings as well. Um, how easy do you find it easy? Do you, like, I guess it's very fulfilling, but um, you're very looking forward to it because it's a great space to hold. But how do you find it holding teacher trainings? I think it. You have to be a certain kind of person, I guess, maybe to to run trainings and to be that kind of main point of contact for so many people and to gather people um but I think also you have to live the practice in my opinion like for me and with the rocket you know we teach what we practice and we practice what we teach so I think just that's it you know like living it being it and and then sharing from that space you can't really go wrong but I do think it's important that to fill your cup to give yourself time because you know you're holding space for a lot of people so for me when I knew that like a month before I was preparing myself by just you know giving myself a little bit more time for my own practice for my own meditation um, just to ensure that I was charging my battery so that I could support others, um, which is just essential, but that's just yoga teacher 101, <laughs> uh, you know, um, but I would say, yeah, that was the main thing to prepare for it so that I felt physically and, um, and clear headed to be able to support everybody that, um, and their energies and their questions and concerns. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, a lot of things coming up on the teacher training, so I can imagine. But yes, thank you very much. I think we covered quite a lot, lot of things and then we can always share all your Instagram and website. Is there any other questions, uh, Ashley, you would like to ask? No, I think we covered everything that we had written down. Did you want to share anything else before we sign off? No, thank you both for having me. I feel really privileged to have been your first guest. Yeah, thank you so much. And it was just it's nice to have a good chat um, mm -hmm. with other fellow yogis and yoga teachers. Um, yeah. And we're all so passionate about the same thing. It's nice to come together. So thank you for creating this space. You're welcome. No, thank you. <laughs> well, I hope to see you soon in person. And until then, it was nice to have you. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.